today I want to talk to you about um, the response of God in the book of Jeremiah. Um, Elder Nathan quoted the verse. It's a verse that is mostly quoted uh, by preachers, by saints, uh, to affirm the importance of prayer. And so, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3, the story begins from verse 1, but our message is coming from verse 3 uh, of this chapter in the Word of God. And so, we'll ask our, our wonderful elder to read, uh, or Esther, or it's Esther who is there, to read for us uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, and uh, you are going to read from verse 1 to verse 3, and um, we will continue with the word of God today. Shut up in prison. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and shew thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. May God bless the reading of his word. On this passage of scripture, there are a number of things that I need to say as I share with you. Just a brief background. Uh, Jeremiah prophesied during a very difficult time. And during this time when he was prophesying, uh, he would even explain things that uh, were straightforward, telling the people the truth about the word of God. And because he was that prophet who used to speak the truth, and, and, and the king uh, was not happy about it, and they ended up putting Jeremiah into prison because he was speaking the truth. There are times when your faith is tested because you are holding on to the truth. But when you do not hold on to the truth, no one bothers you. But the moment you choose to hold on to the truth, you see spears are being thrown towards you. And you wonder why. Such was the situation with Jeremiah. But one thing I like about Jeremiah, even though he was highly shaken by the behavior uh, of the king, uh, you know, Zedekiah uh, could not take some of these things uh, uh, that Jeremiah was talking about. But it was all true. When God speaks a word into your life, he is not just talking or getting excited to talk to you. When God speaks into your life, he is speaking into your life so that he brings transformation, a change of lifestyle, Amen. an influence to create something that is not there. To bring about an igniting fire that will set you aflame and be a representative or true ambassador of God. Now Jeremiah, after he had spoken the word of God and they, they were against him and they felt like, oh, we cannot allow him to keep on walking the streets and uh, continue to prophesy and to tell people about this. We must lock him up. It is the idea and principle of the enemy to desire to lock up Amen. the children of God. Amen. We have the gift and we have something to offer. The devil is always striving hard to lock you up. Amen. That's why you see a lot of people are not moving because they've been locked up by the enemy. But if you are a born again child of God, I want to say to you, it is your time to continue prophesying in the name of the Lord God of Israel. If the Lord is sending you to do something in the kingdom of God, rise up and begin to act. Don't take your time. Amen. Do not tolerate the works of the enemy. And so... Jeremiah came to a point when he was deeply distressed. He didn't know what to do. He was locked up. He was in prison. You know, you are separated from the people you're supposed to be speaking to, 
from the people you're supposed to be uh, prophesying it, and you are locked in there. But inside you, you still have the message. This was the situation with Jeremiah. He had the message in his heart, but he didn't know what to do. So the Bible says that the word of the Lord, you know, came to him. And this is what God said to Jeremiah. The Bible says on verse 3, God was speaking to Jeremiah. It was an answer from God. When you are so much worried, you are under pressure, you are confused, your situation doesn't seem to be a pleasant situation at all, God can come back and begin to speak to you. Amen. It may not be happening every day, but there's a time when God will come to speak to you. You need to prepare your mind and your heart so that when God begins to speak, you will be able to hear the voice of God because God does speak to his people. The Lord has been speaking. He spoke to other people during the first few days of the 10 days and uh, they, they were encouraged, they were motivated and today they are on their track. Oh yes. Um, I said to Mama Rupapa uh, when uh, one of our elders was giving a testimony yesterday during uh, Morning Glory and, and she was saying, uh, uh, my life has been refreshed, I was changed during the 10 days and I said to my wife, to Dr. Gertrude, I say it's true, what she's saying is true. You can tell that there's something that has happened to this person. Now, God comes to Jeremiah. And he's coming to Jeremiah not to release him from prison. He is coming to Jeremiah with a promise. God's response to Jeremiah. Amen. That's what I'm talking about today. God's response to Jeremiah. Now, God comes back and he says to Jeremiah in that situation, in that condition, God said, call to me. Call. The word call as reference or significance of shouting out loud to permit me to hear what is in your heart. God says, call unto me and I will answer you. Amen. But God, I've been, I've, been, I've been in trouble. I've been in fire with these people. Were you not seeing all these things that are going on? As I've been tortured by these people, didn't you see them locking me up in prison? I thought you would send somebody or an angel to unlock the gates of the prison and let me go free. But you are coming back to me to say, Jeremiah, I can see how you have suffered. I can see how you've been tortured. I can see how they have locked you in prison. But I want you to know that this is one thing that I want you to do. I want you to call unto me and I will answer you. God will sometimes stop functioning not because he has no power and not because he doesn't have the ability to do things but because we have not yet called according to the phrase that is used here. There are many people who are calling, 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 and nothing is happening. I'm not talking about those kind of calling, calling, where nothing happens. I'm talking about a call to him, where when you call to him, then something will begin to happen. Something will begin to take place. When you call, God said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, as for you, I want you to call to me and I will answer you. In other words, the answer is not with you. 
The answer is not with any man. The answer is not with the king. The answer is not with the people of Judah. The answer is not with the people of Israel. The answer is with me. People of God, I want to say to you, we need to know and to understand and to have faith and to believe that our answer is with the Lord. My answer is with the Lord. Amen. You know, I was praying this other morning last week, and then my spirit just received that revelation that a lot of people are sick. They are just sick, getting sick because they are accepting sickness. You are attacked and you yield to sickness. Then sickness will keep you at ransom. You can't do anything. And you will become sick. And, and, and my spirit was saying, I, you know, I got this clear revelation from the Lord. The Lord revealing to me that if something or even, even food, there is no food that can just come into you. You have to take that food in order for you to eat or to digest that food. If you don't drink that water, it will never come into you. Now, when you are attacked by a sickness or disease or an infirmity, you have every right to renounce it, to reject it, to refuse it. When you refuse, then you'll be free. And I kept on receiving that revelation as I, I, was, I, was, I was just, you know, finishing my prayer. I kept on receiving that revelation and I, I, I remembered very well um, when uh, our mother, uh, Dr. Yuna Guti, um, was attacked by the enemy. And I heard her saying, I refuse, I renounce you, I reject you, I refuse you, I renounce you, I refuse you, I renounce you. And what happened? She was free. But if you become calm and you receive, you accept, you suffer. Amen. The Holy Spirit just reminded me as I'm talking to you about Jeremiah. God said to Jeremiah, call unto me. Hallelujah. It is that preparedness that we continue to desire every day. If you really want to talk to God, you need to be preparing your heart, your life in order for God to hear you. Because God assured him, you call, I answer. Amen. You call to me, and I will answer you. Amen. So if, he, if Jeremiah wanted to be out of prison, the solution was call to God, and he will answer you. Whichever way, God has every possible means to set you free. I know. From what I'm sharing with you today, this is the reason why so often people want just to dwell on that phrase, call unto me and I'll answer you. The Bible says, and show you great and mighty things. God is not just saying, call unto me and I'll answer you. He's saying, and I will show you you want to get on a special tour after you have prayed. God comes along after you have prayed, after you have called upon him, after you have cried to him, and then God comes to you and then he takes you on a tour. God says, I will show you. You know, those who do, who are, who are, who are involved in, uh, in tourism, they, you, you, if you visit a place you don't know, you need someone who, a tour guide, somebody who will take you to some places and show you uh, the meanings of certain artifacts and other things and show you and let explain some things, historical facts about that place and other things like that. So God says, when you call to me, Jeremiah, I will answer you and I will show you not small things, not cockroaches, I will show you great things. Ladies and gentlemen, when we fail to call, there is no need for you and I to be seeing great things. There is no need for us 
to allow God to take us on his special tour. I want to say to you, when you call upon God, when we pray to God, when we cry to him, he is ready to answer. And not only that, but he is also ready to show us the evidence. He says, I will show you. This is what is going to happen. This is what is going to happen. Fourteen something years ago, we were crying, calling upon the name of the Lord with my friend. And all of a sudden, the Lord started to show me some things that night. I don't forget that. I wrote it down, but it does not fade in my heart. Then the Lord started showing me things, showing me places, speaking to me about certain things. And then when that was done, I then uh, connected with my friend as we were now getting down, descending from the mountain. And then he said to me, oh, I had a, a special visitation from the Lord. And I said, yes, what was it all about? What did the Lord say to you? He said, the Lord was speaking to me about you. And I said, what did he say? And he said, the Lord showed me this and this. And he said this and that. And now I, I want to believe that the Lord is going to keep you alive until these things are fulfilled. Amen. Now, what I saw, what the Lord showed me, is exactly what my friend saw. And the Lord spoke to him exactly as what I saw as I was crying and praying to the Lord. God is able to show you your breakthrough before it has come. God is able to show you even the things that other people will die without seeing, but you can see those things before they happen. God can show you things that are 20 years ago. You can see them today. And you begin to have hope about your future because he has shown you something. And I want to say, when we are coming out of 10 days of prayer and fasting, this must not be the end of calling upon the name of the Lord. When we are coming out of the 10 days of prayer and fasting, our lives must continue to be saturated with the desire to continue to call because the God whom we will be praying to or calling is not going to show us small things. He is ready to show us great things. Hallelujah. He is ready to show us great things. Amen. That's why I thank God all the time when I think about the man, the apostle and servant of God, our father, uh, Professor Ezekiel Guti, because a lot of times when he shares with us as leaders, he tells us about certain things that the Lord shows him and he shares with us. And when he begins to share with us, we will begin to see what is coming and what is in, is in the near future. And that gives us courage and it awakens us to preparedness. We will not be taken by surprise because he would have seen God showing him these things. I want to say to you, seek or desire to call upon the name of the Lord, to pray until the Lord begins to show you things in your spirit. Now, how do we, or how does this happen? When you are spirit-filled, you have the spirit of God in you. God can show you things through a dream. God can show you things in your spirit, God can simply reveal things to you by his spirit as he brings into your life an audible voice. God can reveal to you certain things through his word. It is God's desire not to keep his people in suspense, but to keep his people in faith. God desires that you and I can continue to develop, but not in doubt, but in faith. 
Listen to what the word says here. He says, I will show you great and mighty things fenced or protected or covered in an, a hidden place which you do not know. Uh, things that you cannot distinguish. Things that you cannot tell. What is it? What is it? What is it? You know, the prophets of all time, God used to show them things. At one time, the, the prophet saw uh, a basket flying and God was showing this prophet an aeroplane. These aeroplanes that are flying these days. The prophets of old did not see a real aeroplane. They saw a basket because that's the language they would understand. That I saw a basket flying. God can show you deep things, secret things that you have never seen. And it was according to God's perfect will to reveal to those things to the prophets of the then time so that when we come in, we will be rest assured that we are not worshipping a God who is from nowhere, a God who has no history. We are worshipping a God who has a history. A history to reveal secret things, deep things to those who fear his name. God can show you a lot of things. Amen. I may not be talking about all those things, but you know, we've been seeing a lot of things. Me and my, my wife, we've been seeing a lot of things. Before, sometimes, before these things happen, we see things and sometimes we call people and tell them um, of these things that the Lord shows us. Now here on this verse, the Bible says the things that are hidden, which you do not know. We may not be really getting a quick encouragement or a quick response because we don't know or we are not hearing or because the Lord has not shown us anything. He has not revealed anything to us. But I want to encourage you, do not give up to be prayerful and to seek the face of the Lord. Because God is in the business of answering those that are calling upon his name. Who are you calling? Who are you calling? Sometimes it's good to be calling your friend. Sometimes it's good to be calling your neighbor. But there is a more important time when you begin to call upon him, the almighty God. So that he will come with a message of hope to reveal to you these great things that he's talking about. Amen. Yes, we'll talk about these things. When the Bible talks about great things, it is touching the entire life of a human being. What covers and what surrounds you. It might be the economic world. It might be the political world. It might be the social world. It might be even your family, your inner circle. God can reveal and show you these great things. It may be something that you never thought a person could be healed from and you see God healing that person. God can do anything. He says, I will show you great things. I remember very well a story of a man of God. Um, this man of God went to be with the Lord some years ago. He was preaching in the United States of America, he, coming from Africa. And he, as he was preaching in the United States of America, his mother died in his own country. And he received a phone call and they said, your mother has passed on. And the man of God said, uh, don't worry. Can you Take my mother and go and lay her on my bed. I will come and attend to her when I get back. And he was asked, when are you coming back? And he said, maybe after 10 days. And they said to him, 10 days would suggest that by the time you get here, the corpse will be stinking. It will not work. And he said, just put her on my bed. I'll see her when I come. So he continued with his crusade. 
His mother was lying there in, in his bedroom, on his bed, dead, not alive, dead. And he continued with his crusade. Do you think he was doing that without having seen these things in the spirit? If he had not seen these things in the spirit, he could have really connected his experience with God at this point in time that somehow God showed him that he was going to face a greatest challenge in his life. And when that happened, after the crusade, he went back to his home country in Africa. He arrived home and they were saying, oh, you are back. And he said, yes, I'm back. I want to get into my bedroom now. So, the first thing is that when they opened the room, there was no smell, no odor. His mother had only changed her complexion, but there was no odor. And he said, Mom, I'm back. Can you give me water to drink now? I'm back. He did not say, Arise in the name of Jesus, or life come back. He said, I'm back. Give me. Can you give me water to drink now because I'm back from the trip? And the mother said, what do you want? You want some water? And he said, yes. She woke up. Now, God can show you great things that you have never seen. I can spend time here telling you stories, true stories about Baba Guti, what God showed him. And then some people were doubting about what he said in high fields. God showed him when they were in a small class and there were just a few people in that classroom sitting on those children's chairs. You know those chairs for a preschool? Grade zero chairs? People to come and sit there to attend church and there were just a few, a handful of people in that, in that classroom. And Baba Gutu say, God has showed me that this church is going to grow. And it is going to grow more than even Roman Catholic. And some people would look at him and say, this man is crazy. <laughs> we are just a few people here and very poor. How are these things going? God is ready to show us greater things, not small things. You know, sometimes you, you get excited to see hear people saying, ah, to somebody who is not, uh, 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 you know, pregnant and they say, oh, I saw you. They can come to Mamar Papa and say, I saw you in a vision, you know, carrying a, a very big womb. You were pregnant. These are funny dreams that you hear people talking about. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about genuine signs that God can show you. And those things will come to pass according to the word of the Lord. So God was saying to Jeremiah, I have great things to show you. And here you are, you are in a prison. And you don't know whether you are going to be released by Zedekiah or not. You don't know what your future holds. You don't know whether you are going to prophesy again or that's the end of your life. God comes and he says, there are greater things. I am going to show you greater things than what we have seen already. I am coming with greater things. And inside his heart, Jeremiah is like a man who is so thirsty and desperate for water. And then finally, he got to a place where somebody gives him a cup of water to sup and to quench the thirst. He's about to ask and say, give me some more. Keep on telling me. What is it that you are going to show me? What are these great things you are talking about? Can you please reveal these greatest things that you are talking about? Oh, yes. There are a number of things that you can. He's referring to healing. Greater things in light of healing. God doing greater things. Amen. Amen. It's High Revival Center. A man walks inside the church. I told you this story the other day. They brought this paralytic young boy who was just a fragile. He could not walk. They just carried him to church. 
And they brought him, laid him right in front of the altar. And the ushers told the man of God, there's a person who just walked into the church and they brought a baby uh, who does not walk, who does not do anything, just uh, roamed around and uh, some blankets around him. And Baba Kuti walked up front on the podium and he said, who, what is this? And they said, there is a baby inside there. Why have you laid? Oh, he doesn't walk, he's, he's paralyzed, he can't do anything. Then he says, if God cannot reveal himself here, where is he going to reveal himself? If he cannot heal this person, where is he going to heal people? All of a sudden, a miracle happened. God can show you great things that you never thought would happen and they will begin to happen. I want to say to you, if you have been praying as we've been praying during the 10 days, continue to pray and expect greater things. God will bring those greater things your way. And you are going to witness some of this. He says in mighty things, not small things, mighty things, these things are hidden. You will have to to, to find out later on, not now, but these things are going to be revealed to you. God is in a business of showing his children what they've been praying for and he is going to use the power of his word to continue to reveal those things to us. Read Psalms chapter 91 verse 15 for us, please. As they are looking for Psalms 91 verse 15, I want to say to you, there is no prayer that God is not going to respond to. A no is an answer. A yes is an answer. So you need to know that sometimes God says no in answer to your prayer. Sometimes he says yes in answer to your prayer. So you must always be alert and be sensitive to know whether God is saying no. And there must be a reason when God says no to your request. He does not just say no for no apparent reason. That's why the Bible says the secret things remains to the Lord. In other words, if something does not happen there according to your expectation, do not lose heart because God knows what is good for you and me. He knows what is permissible to you and to me. Whatever is permissible to us, God will release it to us according to his word. So when God says no, sometimes he says no because he knows when you get it, you'll be in a serious problem. When you don't get it, you'll be safe. Amen. And you are crying, I want it, I want it. God says no. So we, when we cry, as we cry, we must learn to understand that sometimes as we are crying, God is going to say no. And by saying no, we will still be in a position to see greater and mighty things. Amen. Amen. Even when he says no, God will still show you greater and mighty things that you yourself never thought would happen. So what does this teach us? This teaches us, as God was teaching uh, Jeremiah then, to have faith in God. When you cry, believe and have faith in God because God answers prayer. Psalms 91 verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Now what God is saying here. He is confirming his character to us. When we cry to him, God confirms his character and he says, this is what I am going to do for you. Now, why is it that the devil does not want us to get involved in prayer? Because he doesn't want us to get the things that God promised us. And until we realize and discover that the enemy does not want us to know the things that God promised us. Amen. He doesn't want us to get those things. And that's why when you pray, sometimes you pray, you pray, you pray. And sometimes you feel like ah, nothing is happening. I want to say to you, something great is happening. Amen. 
something great is happening. God is somehow working out a way to answer your prayer. Something is happening under there, under there. Something is happening. Don't give up. You see, the promise here, God is not saying, just you pray. Jeremiah, just you pray. I know, just you pray because you are my child, you are a believer. Just to pray, continue praying. God is giving this hopeless prophet hope. And he says, greater things are coming. I will give you. I will supply to you. There will be deliverance. There will be protection. There will be healing for you. God is saying, I will supply as you pray. Brothers and sisters, I want to say, God is not going to come back in silence. God is going to come back with a message. Amen. 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 That's why I don't believe, personally me, I don't believe in praying, 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 praying and there's no answer. No. No, 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 no. I believe in praying, 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 praying. A message comes. Praying, 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 praying. A revelation comes. Praying, 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 praying. A word from the Lord comes. That's what I believe in. Amen. That's what I believe in. You know, someone called me uh, to tell me, to ask me to pray with somebody who was very sick. And I, I said, okay, I'll, I'll pray. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, that person has to hear the voice of the word of God. So I had to speak the word of God to that person and I asked him for the phone number for that person. And I called. I spoke. That person was about to die. Until now, the person is alive. Amen. That person was supposed to have died last year. But until now, he's still alive. Now, God comes in and responds to our cries. And he delivers. He provides. When God begins to answer you, don't think that is all that he can do. He still has got a long way in your relationship with him. God still wants to reveal himself in a greater way to you and me. I am waiting. I am listening. I am crying. I am praying. I still pray. I still cry. I still yield myself before the Lord in prayer. And I don't look at myself and say, oh, I'm a pastor. Oh, I'm a bishop. Things must just happen because I'm a bishop. I pray. I pray. I pray. Amen. This last Friday when prayer and my wife, you know, the midnight prayer we do, so it was only us. And um, Elijah and his wife joined us for a while and they got out. We continued in prayer. We continued in prayer. I like to pray to call upon him because I know when I call, when I pray, power is coming. Power that will reveal great and mighty works. Power is being released towards my life. Power is being released to bring about breakthroughs in my life. Power is being released to cause me to become a successful leader in the kingdom of God. When I pray, when I pray, when I pray, I speak to God. Amen. Speak to God. Amen. Jeremiah, call unto me and I will answer you. Just to call. Your, your business is just to call. Amen. Amen. And my business is to answer. Amen. And to show you greater and mighty things. My business is to reveal to you the hidden things. The secrets that other people do not know. I will reveal them to you. All these men and women of God we learn about, we hear about. It is because they surrender themselves to him Amen. with that complete commitment, Amen. with passion and desire to want to meet with the Lord. Amen. After so many time in prayer, God would then reveal himself. 
No wonder why people like Daniel, Michelle, and I bet these people, they continue to experience the power of God. They continue to experience the hand of God because most of the time they were calling upon him. They were calling upon him and God would not cease to reveal to them secret things. When you are not seeing what is in the spiritual realm, and when you are not seeing the things that are ahead of you, sometimes you cry when you are not supposed to be crying, when you're supposed to be saying, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I will wait for it. Amen. It's coming my way. Amen. Amen. It's going to happen. Amen. I will still continue to pray. I will still continue to give myself some more time to pray about this thing which I saw. I will still continue to cry for the Lord to intervene in this situation. I will still continue to pray so that the Lord will stop the angel of death. I will still continue to pray so that the Lord will begin to reveal these things to my brothers and sisters. Listen, God is in a business of coming back to his people. To speak his word of hope. Amen. Jeremiah 29 verse 12. Many people like to read and to preach. Jeremiah 29 12, 11. Oh, I know the plans I have for you. Ah, that's the powerful verse in the Bible. I want you to read verse 12, please. Jeremiah 29 verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I shall hearken unto you. Then shall you go and pray unto me. God is speaking. And then God again brings in the mind of his people's understanding a word of promise. He says, I will hear you. I will hear you. When you pray, God says, I will hear you. He is not saying, I may hear you. He is saying, I will hear you. God is saying, I will hear you. When you go out to pray, to cry to the Lord, God is saying, I will hear you. He is not saying, maybe I will. He is saying, I will hear you. I will hear you. I will hear you. What does it mean to say, I will hear you? It means he is listening. So our business is to call. He is listening. He is listening up there in heaven. He is listening up there in heaven. And as I was talking to somebody, I said, this year, if, if people are going to be praying earnestly, we are going to see greater things. Amen. Great breakthroughs. Amen. We are going to see the things that were hidden. They will be manifested, they will be revealed to us if we continue praying earnestly to the Lord this year. Greater breakthroughs are coming. Amen. Ah yes, I can see the prince of darkness being pulled down. This year, greater things are going to happen in the name of Jesus. Let's keep praying. Let us keep praying to him who says, I will hear you. God's ear is attentive, but it is not attentive to anybody. Amen. His ear is attentive to his children who are crying from a clean heart, who are waiting upon the Lord to intervene, who are saying, Lord, I am here. I need your help. Lord, I am here. I need your touch. Lord, I am here. I am expecting you to perform a miracle. In my life, I have seen the Lord Jesus Christ using me as a point of conduct by people who call and ask me to pray for their beloved ones. Most of the time, it's just like that. You know, I, I know that sometimes we don't tell people um, that it's the Lord who is healing you. We just act like it's us who is doing it. But I want you to know this. No man can heal man. But only those who act and, and do it in obedience to the word of God. God says, through Christ, you will heal the sick. But the actual healer is not us. It is God. It is the power of God through us. He uses 
uses us as his vessels to reach out to his people. I cannot heal people. I cannot heal the world. But God can heal people. God can heal the world. God can raise up the dead. He only uses you and me so that other people may have faith in this same God. Because God has every... He could bring just an angel to touch the sick without anybody knowing. How many people would tell us after having been admitted in hospital, seriously ill, some in intensive care units, you know, in a coma, and all of a sudden, the angel just appears next to their bed. The next morning, they are well. Amen. That does not just happen. There are some people who are calling. There are some people who are praying. You were not praying. You were in a coma. But there are some people who are praying. And God hears. He answers. And some people will be already sharing part of your estate. Amen. Saying there is no more life here. This person is just going to die. We're just waiting for the day. And all of a sudden, you begin to blink, blink, blink and talk and say, can I have some water to drink? God is ready. Can you read for us quickly, please? Can you read for us Isaiah 55, verse 6? God is ready. God is ready. Brothers and sisters, I'm saying to you, God is ready. Amen. Yes. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. The idea of seeking the Lord while he may be found. Calling upon him whilst he is still near. It is an idea to try and motivate us that God is not always where we think he is. God is where he is. And it is us who need to take a step now towards God. How many steps are we taking towards God? It is up to you and I. We must be moving forward, closer to where God is through prayer. And he will still come back and confirm these promises. Now the reason why God was speaking to Jeremiah like this, it's not because God was just talking just to get Jeremiah excited to say, oh, one day I'm going to be out of prison. Because of what God is saying, God is there to make every word that comes from his mouth to be fulfilled. And he will fulfill that word in time of need. Now, God showed Jeremiah these things that we are talking about here. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 14. Can you read that scripture verse please? What Isaiah saw is exactly what Jeremiah was seeing. And the way God was speaking to Jeremiah, in some cases the same way that God was speaking to Isaiah. God reveals to him things that were to come, things that were to happen, things that would take place at another time. Where are we in our faith? Taking one step at a day into prayer will allow God to come and speak to you. Amen. Draw close to God. Call unto him when he is near. Amen. God seems to be a God who can go a distance. And we need to watch how he is moving. As we see how God is moving, we must move according to the same pace in order for us to walk in safety. Just a few days when I, I was uh, trying to find out about uh, the road regulations in Canada, and uh, as I was reading this small book, and then I heard they talking about merging, and I said, merging? I know of giveaways and all that 
a non-stop sign, what's about merging, what is it all about? And I discovered that in that small book, they talk about you as you merge, as you come into a highway, you, you don't just stop anyhow. You must be able to detect and to read the speed of any vehicle that is on the highway. And then you merge carefully. You don't bump into another car. You do not obstruct the vehicles on the highway. You merge. You join in softly. It's an opening that you use in order for you to be on the highway also. Amen. So, safely. You do it safely. You don't harm anybody. You don't hate anybody. So, prayer helps you and I to navigate, to manage, and then get onto the highway. Amen. You want to see things happening? You want to see things happening in your life? I'm saying, let's call upon him. Amen. Let's cry to him. Where he's close, when he's near, Amen. when he's not at a distance, let's continue talking to God. Amen. Don't say, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. A lot of people are being locked by the enemy in the name of, I'm tired. There is, I'm tired that you need to resist because you want to pray. Amen. You have to resist that spirit of tiredness because you know if you don't pray, that spirit of tiredness is not going to bless you. That spirit of tiredness will not give you a breakthrough. That spirit of tiredness is not going to keep you any highway. So what do you need to do? Ignore it. Rise up and begin to pray. Oh, I like a Dr. Gertrude. Sometimes she tells me, hmm, today, I don't think I'll be able to pray today. I'm so tired. I look at her and say, oh, I'm feeling sleepy, but I don't know. I'm feeling sleepy. But then I look at her and I say, if you're feeling sleepy, you're feeling sleepy, so what's next? And I said, it's not yet time for prayer. Why can't you sleep now? And when it's time for prayer, then you wake up. And I watch her. And she's not going to bed. She's still there. <sighs> this woman. I'm tired. I'm feeling sleepy. But she doesn't go to sleep. When it is time to pray, she starts praying. Oh, she starts praying and she prays. She prays. She prays. She prays. She prays. When you know that he may be at a distance, but now he's so close to me. That's the time when you should be praying. Don't allow the spirit of tiredness to keep you. When it comes to prayer. But if there is a party, oh! Yeah, what, what, is, what time is it? You want to know everything because there is a party. But when there is prayer, mm, you don't want to hear, I'm tired, I'm too busy. I want to tell you a secret. The secret is God could have just released Jeremiah from the prison. Yes. But Jeremiah was supposed to exercise his faith in God through prayer. God says, yeah, you're going through this, but you still need to talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Cry to me. Call unto me. Call unto me when I'm still found. Call unto me when I'm so close. Call unto me. It's time to call. It's time to call. It's time to call. Call to me. How are we calling? Are we calling? Can you read? Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 14. Yeah. They have healed also the people that of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Now, this, this, this is the behavior of the devil. The devil brings in false messages. He says there is peace when there is no peace. But God does not say that. When you hear God saying that there is no peace, truly there is no peace. But when there is peace, when God says there is going to be peace, truly there is going to be peace. When God said to Jeremiah, call 
cry unto me, I will answer you. Truly, God is ready to answer us. Amen. Today, if you call, God is not a false prophet. Amen. God is not going to say peace, peace when there is no peace. Amen. He's not going to say that. Baba Guti came and he said, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, the Lord showed me. 2020 is not going to be an easy year. Yes. The Lord showed me something terrible which has never happened is going to happen. Yes. And he said, I, I don't know how to explain this to you. But what I say to you, make sure that your life is in good relationship with the Lord. And he said, make sure you continue to pray. Pray, 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 my children, pray. That is what Baba Kutu was saying. And I'm saying to us today, unless we are praying, not playing, praying, seeking the spirit of prayer, seeking to pray, he said to Jeremiah, call, pray, call to me. Call to me. God is still saying pray. He has not stopped saying don't pray. God is not saying don't pray because Jesus came, because the Holy Spirit is in you. God is still saying pray. Pray. When the Holy Spirit fell on the apostles on the day of Pentecost, what happened? There was a lot of prayer. Prayer continued. You get into chapter 2, the whole of chapter 2, the whole chapter there is talking about prayer and the power of prayer and the results of prayer. Praying, 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 praying. So, People who don't like to pray are robbing the church. They are robbing themselves their blessings. God is saying, call. Things are there that I want to show you. Why can't he just show us? No, you have to pray. Musikada. I was at one matter. You have to pray. Kutuzi wone. Zwaka gaziri wanamari. Oh. I may stop here for today. Mighty, mighty things. Mighty. He's talking about experiences. He's talking about miracles. He's talking about things that we cannot make. Amen. Things that we cannot produce. Things that we cannot provide solutions to. He's talking about those things when he said, I will show you great and mighty things. He's talking about power. He's talking about power, the power of God. He's talking about sizes, images of magnitude. He's not talking about small, tiny things. No, he's talking about big things. Big things. Oh, I can tell you stories. I can go on and on, on and on, on and on. I can tell you stories. We wouldn't be having Esther here today had we not called to the Lord. Amen. And the doctor said, Oh, it's 50-50. Trying to intimidate my wife and, and, and me. And uh, <clears throat> you know, the doctor went to the stage to say, you need to pay a deposit because she's not going to give a normal birth. Because she may have complications. You, must, you have to pay. So I refused. I said, no, I'm not going to pay. <laughs> the doctor said, you must pay. Said, I said, no, I'm not going to pay. Everything is going to be okay with you. You know what? My wife delivered this baby without any hassles. She was out. The nurses had to come crying, running. Ah, ah, the babies are running out. Ah. They were like, they made the people crazy, people in the world. And my wife was saying, but I told you, the doctor arrived when the baby was already out. He said, ah, the baby is already, ah, already out. Uh, yes, she's already out. <laughs> I will show you great and mighty things, miracles. Hallelujah. So you, you, the, you, you think the miracle you heard from uh, my soul and soul is the only miracle that God, they are hidden miracles. Hidden, which must be exposed to us, revealed to us when his time comes. Okay. Some people are saying, ah, ah, Chris, ah, Chris, with your child. But when 
and you keep on praying and praying and praying, God releases big things. <laughs> Ask him, Chris, he will tell you. Greater and mighty things. <laughs> we don't want to pray. We don't want to cry. We don't want to call. We don't want to say, Lord, this is my situation. Lord, take me over. Help me to cross this stream. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. We think it's a waste of time. But what do we do with these promises? Because the Bible says for the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for your kingdom is real. Your word is true. There is nothing that we can add or subtract because your word is the complete authority that we desire. Almighty God, I pray in the name of Jesus. You are the same God who came to Jeremiah with the same word. And you are the same God who is coming to us with the same word. Amen. Call unto me and I'll show you greater and mighty things that you have not seen. Things that are hidden. Things that are yet to be revealed. Almighty God, I pray in the name of Jesus that this same seed to him who is down and trodden, to him who is pressed and shaken, to him who is in deep confusion, to him who does not see his future becoming a bright future. Oh Lord my God, I pray this thing and I pray in the name of Jesus asking of you, God Almighty, the God who answers by fire, the God who answers by signs and wonders, the God who answers by miracles, the God who releases the things that are hidden, the God who manifests those things that are covered to us, even to those who fear his name. Let it be to your children who cry day and night in the name of Jesus, seeking for an opening seeking for a breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word have its way in their lives so that miracles, greater and mighty things will begin to happen in the lives of your children. Father, I thank you today. Amen. Healing is ours. Amen. Healing is ours. Amen. Miracles belongs to us. We claim them in the name of Jesus because it is a promise to us as your children. We take delight in the power of the cross in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to honor and to glorify the name of Jesus above any other name. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are healed in his name. Father, we honor and glorify the name of your only begotten son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank you today in the name of Jesus. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and may all God's people say